All right, hello, amateur radio operators, KM6LYW uh, a Development Laboratory. I don't know, Shack Music Room. I don't know, what, what do we call this space? Anyway, this is where I spend most of my time. Hey, we're going to talk about uh, the DigiPi some more. I know I've got a whole other video on how to build the hardware, you know, with the, you can actually solder some stuff together. We're going to talk, it, and once you put it together, it turns into this little device. Check out my other video on how to build this. This is the DigiPi. It's a Raspberry Pi Zero and an audio board and an optional uh, TFT monitor um, that uh, we've got some software where we can we can do all kinds of cool digital modes on this uh, from APRS uh, Digipeter to, to TNC over Bluetooth if you want a WinLink server a uh, AX.25 node you know with AX.25 networking built into it so this is the hardware see my other video on how to build this and I'm going to show you a little more about the software like in my last video I just kind of left you hanging it's like well here's a Raspberry Pi image Good luck and God bless, you know. But if you've never burned an image to a Raspberry Pi, you know that's that's <laughs> that's that's impossible, right? You'll never figure that out. Um, so the, I'm going to make this a little easier. I'm just going to go through the steps here, and I'm going to go through them quickly on how to take uh, download the, uh, the the SD card image for this, which you see in this web browser here, and uh, basically get it onto an SD card um, and configure it like with your information. We need to put your call sign, your password, and you know your grid square and all that stuff all needs to go on here before you can really operate it. Um, so let's go through that process. So here we are starting with a brand, freshly built DigiPi with no SD card in it. See my other video for that and how to build this guy. And then here is a blank, well, probably blank SD card. We're going to override it anyway. Um, and then I've got a you know, like an SD card burner here. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and put this in here right now. All right, and so how do we get the SD card image? So right now it's just a developer release only. I'm going to make like a public release of this image once I'm happy it meets certain levels of quality. It'll probably be a um, pared down to the, just the components that work really well. Probably just an HPRS, Digipeter, and TNC. I don't know. I haven't really figured that out yet. But if you are a KM6LYW Patreon, first of all, Thank you. Uh, it's what pays for a lot of this stuff, um, a lot of this experimentation. Um, but if you aren't and you want a copy of this SD card image, um, I would just encourage you to go out to my Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash km 6 LYW and just a you know a couple bucks. I'm only asking for beer money, um, maybe a new soldering iron now and then. That's about it. Um, but once you go there and you're a Patreon, you'll get access to the uh, the password for this SD card image. So if you and the SDR image is on a website called Krager.org. I'm trying to highlight it up here. C R A I G E R dot org slash Patreon, and uh, that's this page right here. And at the very top, it says download Raspberry Pi SD card image. Um, it is going to prompt you for a username and password. <laughs> Actually, you can see the username right there. Um, but again, if you're a Patreon um, at patreon.com slash km6lyw, um, you, it'll unlock the post that has a password to this image. Again, this is the developer image. Um, this hasn't you know, been widely tested, so I'm really interested in your feedback on you know, how this worked for you, um, you know, before I open a landslide of support email issues, right, if once I open this to, to everyone. So uh, you enter the password that was uh, given to you once you became a Patreon and, and sign in. And we are going to download it. Um, I'm just going to download it to my temp directory. It's going to download digipy 1.2.zip. Uh, I'm going to save it. It's about 1.2 gigs. I don't know if we if I should pause the video and accelerate through time. It says two minutes left. I'm not on the best internet connection. I'm, I'm going to pause you and we're going to warp through time here real quick. Uh, we're watching down in the corner. It's a quarter downloaded. And if all went well, we just warped through time. Yeah, I did download it. Yeah, it probably took about a minute and a half. I don't know if it's my ISP locally or remotely. But anyways, um, I did download a file um, from Krigger.org uh, slash Patreon and uh, clicked on that. Downloaded the file. I put it in a, in a directory called uh, slash temp slash digipy. It'll just be in a folder on your PC. Let me clear that. Um, so this is the file here. Now, I don't know if you use Windows or a Mac or whatever, but you need to unzip this file, right? Um, I don't know how to unzip the file. Um, I just, on Linux, you just type unzip digipy like that, and then it starts inflating the image. Um, I For Windows, I'm sure there's some sort of file archive thing, and I'm for Mac, there's got to be a way for you guys to unzip zip files. But unzip 
the image we just downloaded from krigger.org slash Patreon. Um, then it'll be like a disk image. When I say image, it'll be like an SD card image, and we're going to write it out, lay it out to the SD card byte for byte, you know, rather than just copying individual files to it. Um, it's a little under four gigs, so you should be able to use a four gig SD card. Um, you can always expand the file system if you want, but it's really not necessary because uh, for the most part, this is just going to be a read-only file system. So it's kind of like more like firmware uh, than an actual Linux file system. All right, so we've unzipped it. Um, so now if we look in this directory, we've got a file, the original zip file, and then we've got the contents of that zip file, which is this image file. Now this part's a little more tricky. Um, if we go over and look at this uh, krigger.org slash Patreon, I, I give you some options here on how to write this out to an SD card. Ultimately, you gotta get the image laid out onto the SD card, this SD card somehow. And it's gonna be different uh, for every you know, operating system that you have. I'm going to show you the Linux way because we have a Linux thing to do it here. Um, every Raspberry Pi user basically has to do this at some point if you're writing an image to Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and, and look it up. Um, I don't know. On Windows, it looks like there was a, it's called Etcher, I think was one of the apps. I actually tried to look it up. And then on Mac, there's another way to flash SD cards, images out to SD cards themselves. So I'm going to do it the Linux way. And that's here on this uh on these instructions. So I'm just going to say DD, it stands for disk dupe. The in file equals digipy zero dot image. Don't, do not write out the zip file itself. That's compressed. You need to unzip it. And then inside that zip file, there's an IMG image file. And that's what you want to write it out to. The out file is going to be uh, slash dat. Actually, you know, I need to see what device this is on my Linux profile, on my Linux system. So I need to insert the SD card into the reader, and I've got a USB hub right here. I'm going to do that right now. And let's uh, make it fit here. All right, the SD card's connected to my computer. You can see, you know, device notifier came up here. Do not open it in the file manager or anything yet, but we still want to use it as a raw disk, disk image. Let me just control C. I'm going to type the command D message, D-M-E-S-G. And that kind of tells you what hardware, what's been happening with your hardware in your system. And it looks like there's a new device attached um, called SDG. This is Linux name for the disk drive. So I know the disk drive I need to write to. I know the name of the image. I have everything I need to write out the image to the SD card. So DD for disk dupe, I think is what that stands for. In file equals digipy dot image. Again, not the zip file. The out file is going to be slash dev slash s. SDG, and we got SDG from uh, the D message command. You know, make sure you don't write to SDA. That's probably going to be your PC's disk. You do not want to blow away your disk drive. So be really, really, really careful that you're writing this to the right disk uh, file. In this case, I know it's SDG um, because I can see that from the D message command. And I'm also going to say BS for, <laughs> for block size. I know what you're thinking. And I'm going to say 4 meg. That accelerates the process a little bit, so it just writes it out in 4 meg chunks rather than byte for byte. So I'm going to start this process. Hit return. I'm going to double check the SDG. Yeah, okay, I'm not blowing away my root disk. This is the actual SD card. All right. And away it goes. Now, this is going to write out about 4 gigs of information. And, of course, SD cards aren't the fastest thing in the world. So I'm going to go ahead and through the magic of... Uh, computer recording stuff. Actually, I'm using Open Broadcast Studio here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause it, and we're going to warp through time. And, yeah, that took about, I don't know, four or five minutes maybe to write it out, and that's on a pretty new USB card reader. So that was uh, writing out four gigs to the SD card. I'm going to yank the SD card out of the USB hub. And so now the DigiPi image is on this little piece of media. Um, this is just, I don't know, an 8 gig card, I think. Uh, it doesn't matter. So what we want to do now is take our DigiPy that uh, hopefully you built in the other video, and we want to jam this SD card into the DigiPy. And it's uh, always difficult. There it is. Just slides right in there. Hopefully uh, I did that on the camera there. So it just slides into the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, so, you know, you, we can apply power to this now. But again, we still need to re 
put in our call sign, you know, our pa APRS passwords, you know, WinLink configuration, our grid square, maybe GPS coordinates. We still need to do all of that. And up until now, that's been a very manual process, editing all of the little config files. So I wrote some, some scripts and whatnot to make this a whole lot easier. So if you look out on the instructions on craigerorg slash Patreon, there's a couple of different ways to do this, to get to customize your DigiPy software image. Um, you could um, use it, do it the old-fashioned way and just, uh, you know, plug a bunch of cables into this, the keyboard monitor, and, you know, turn all that on. It's, it's just not very romantic, though. You know, this is a Raspberry Pi Zero. We shouldn't have to use keyboards and monitors and things like that. But that is one way to do it. You could just plug it into your TV, hook up a key, keyboard, and then edit the, uh, the what, what I'm calling the localized.sh config file and then running it. Um, that's all you have to do. But... What I want to do, um, I want to be able to travel with this, you know, and I always have like a Wi-Fi device with me. So one thing I like to do is, is uh, maybe just we'll use a, um, a Wi-Fi device to connect to this. So let me, uh, before we can do that, we're going to have to actually apply power. So I've got a, I don't know, USB battery here and a cable, and I'm actually going to boot this thing up just by applying power to the power connector. And if you, what's interesting is the blue light comes on real dim during a power cycle. That's kind of cool. You can actually see if the power light came on. That's actually the uh, the Bluetooth status adapter. So if you connect to this, the TNC over Bluetooth serial port protocol, like with APRS Droid, that blue light will light up. So this is probably going to take a minute to boot. Um, I'm going to let it do that. This is, again, this is a Raspberry uh, Pi Zero DigiPi build with a uh, stock SD card that we just flashed. I'm going to warp through this process here and actually I'm going to set up the camera to like my phone or tablet here so we can do some more work using the tablet um, over Wi-Fi. So let's warp through this time, <laughs> boot time. This will just take about a minute. You'll, I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, it, it, okay, it booted up um, and it should bring you to this screen right here. It should say TNC slash iGate. That's the default mode. Of course, if you press one of these two buttons here, it'll switch between a Digipeter and an iGate. So that way, we, at least we know it booted up. I mean, it's not connected to a radio or anything. Um, it's not even on our Wi-Fi network yet. But what I think you'll discover is if you do have like an Android device, like I have used this tablet here, which will be a spectacularly reflective tablet. All right, you guys will let me know if this is weird. All right, so on my tablet and you, or on your phone or whatever, go into your Wi-Fi setup. I'm going to go to more settings. And hopefully this is bright enough. Let me make this even brighter. This might be a spectacular failure. But anyways, this these are the, the Wi-Fi access points on my network. You'll notice in, in addition to maybe your home network, um, there's one called DigiPi. Um, Hey, what's in that's that's our wife that's our uh, digipi and what i'm going to do is click on actually i'm going to say forget network because i'm going to pretending like i'm a brand new user i have connected this before so i can click on digipi and it's going to ask me for a password now the password on the stock image is uh, a b c d e f g h i j so a b c d e f g h i j and that, of course, is on our uh, our instructions over here on this line. It tells you what that password is. And I'm going to say connect. Authenticating, obtaining IP address. All right. Now our, our phone or Wi-Fi device, whatever you have, is now connected to the DigiPi network, which isn't connected to anything else. So I want you to open a web browser. And I want you to go to... 10.0.0.5 slash Wi-Fi dot PHP. Okay, and that's going to be your DigiPy. There's a little website running on there, and uh, you'll notice it's prompting for Wi-Fi setup. I'm going to make this a little bit closer. Wi-Fi setup. Now, this is the spot where you enter your home's SSID. Um, so, in the case of my home. Um, my access is XXX, and my password is, well, I'm just going to give it to you here.
That's my home's Wi-Fi password, and I'm going to hit submit. And this is basically bringing my DigiPy onto my home network, so I can like secure shell into it. I can hit it with a web browser, you know, from my PC or something like this. So it's still not in the internet yet, but it is a, a, an access point. Um, so it, I did uh, enter that. It's saying Wi-Fi credentials updated, plus reboot for changes to take effect, which is exactly what I'm going to do. It says restarting device, and it says try uh, HTTP colon slash slash digipeter4 in a couple of minutes. So it's going through the reboot process now. Um, you'll know because the screen is completely blank and the Pi, it's actually rebooting. Um, so I'm going to do what this suggests and go to digipeter4, which is the host name of the thing, which is what your uh, your router should, should, should say. Now, we should expect this error because it hasn't rebooted yet. So it says digipeter4 is unreachable, and that's okay. Um, we, we've still got to wait for it to reboot. In fact... Uh, I will probably, when it reboots, it's going to be on my home network, so I don't have to use this phone anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to our our PC here, and we can do everything from our PC. So through the magic of video editing, I'm going to wait for this DigiPy to complete the reboot process. And then we're going to conf finish configuring it using our uh, PC. All right, so quick time warp. This Pi did finish booting, and the reason we know that is because it says TNC iGate there. We're not seeing any radio stations because it's not connected to a radio just yet. Um, so it is on our network, and but we can we will need to verify that. Um, I'm just going to open a, a web browser on my PC now, and I'm just going to type Digipeter4. Hopefully your router picks up this name for the device. It really depends on your Wi-Fi router configuration. If it doesn't, uh, log into your router and see if there's a new device there and figure out what its IP address is um, and, and go to that. Um, so, but uh, here, my, no, my, my Wi-Fi router will honor the host name of the device that it suggests and it's Digipeter 4. So I'm typing that into a new tab in my browser. And sure enough, there's our DigiPi on our home network now. So it's attached to our Wi-Fi network, and we can reach it from any device in the house. Um, I'm just using this PC. You could be using your Windows PC, using any web browser you want. Um, it says the TNC 1200 baud VHF uh, service is active. Um, but we're not going to mess with any of this yet because it doesn't know who we are. It doesn't have any of our passwords. It's not reporting any of this information upstream. Um, so we need to uh, SSH or PuTTY, I think is what Windows people call it, PuTTY into the system. And we're going to edit one configuration file and run it. And then it's going to sprinkle all of our personal information into all of the config files on the DigiPy and really make it yours uh, to get it, get it logged in as you. All right, so um, now if you're on a Windows PC, I think you use PuTTY. We need to secure shell into this thing. Uh, let me move this over here so you can see it. Um, and this is documented pretty well on the craigerorg slash Patreon site. Um, uh, for example, uh, I am going to now SSH as the Pi user at Digipeter4. Yep, I want to continue. The, the password for the Pi user is Raspberry, so I'm going to enter that now. All right, and then we now have a command prompt on our DigiPi. Um, it's called DigiPeter4 on your network at home, hopefully, uh, if you entered your, your Wi-Fi credentials in properly. Um, so there's one file you need to worry about. I know we can do an LS to list the files in my home directory, and there's a bunch. Don't let these freak you out. There's just one we're interested in, and that's called localize. SH. All right, we need to edit that file. So I use VI as an editor. Uh, a lot of you use Nano. I'm going to use Nano as an example. It's how to edit a file. So I'm going to type Nano localize.sh at Sierra Hotel. And this is going to actually, no, I almost forgot. We need to do something really important first. We need to sudo, that means do as the root user, remount. So what does remount mean? Uh, means remount the file system as with read write permissions because by default it comes up in read only mode um, so it's more like a firmware there's no moving parts you don't wear out your sd card so now we can write to the file system because i did a sudo remount now i want to edit our config file and i can use a command editor called nano and i'm going to edit the file called localize so i type nano localize and here is where you enter all of your information so 
you know, uh, you, we're going to need your Wi-Fi SSID, even though we already entered it, your pass Wi-Fi password, your call sign, um, your WinLink password, if you have one, your APRS password, which you can generate. If you look in the instructions over here on patreon.org, um, it'll tell you where to generate these, like the APRS password. Um, you get it. You can generate one here at this address and to go to winlink.org, get your WinLink password. But anyways, we're editing this file. Um, I could type all of this stuff in, but I know I have it stashed here locally, so I'm just going to paste it in. But normally you would use, you know, move your cursor around, type in your call sign, KM6LIW. Uh, my WinLink password would be here. APRS password is, you know, like 22465, you know, edit all of these stuff. Um, if you're not sure what the latitude, latitude? <laughs> latitude and longitudes are um, scroll down in the file i'm scrolling down and you'll see an example of what they need to look like so when you enter your latitudes and longitude uh, make them look like this so the first latin long um, should be have the decimal point for some reason moved two positions to the right so this is 40 degrees 99.99 min, .99 minutes this is 140 degrees longitude um, with 99.99 .99 minutes um, Alternatively, I think it's WinLink that likes it in this format. You enter your latitude again, only uh, where you would put the, the the degree marker. You put a caret for some reason. So this is 40 degrees and 99.99 minutes north. And this is 140 degrees. That's what the caret means. And 99.99 minutes west. Um, you know, I don't know how to calculate your latitude and longitude. I think you can look that up on online. And then your node password, just make something up. This is for when you do your AX.25 node service. Um, just make something up cool. I just put ABC123. Um, so th these are the examples. So go back up to the top here and then fill out your stuff accordingly. All right. Uh, normally I would type all this stuff in, but I'm sure. You don't want to see me do that. So I'm going to, you don't have to see what I'm doing over in this window here. I have uh, I have all of my uh, information in a file here. So I'm just going to paste it for sake of time here. So you normally you type that stuff in there, but I'm just going to paste over this basically. We'll do this real quick. And we paste it in there. There's all my information. Hey, now you have all my logins and passwords and stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, it's amateur radio, so passwords are, are what you make of them, really. It's more of an honor system. I can hit Control X and say to exit. And then it's asking me if I wanted to save. I want to say Y. Yes, I want to save. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit return because I'm going to write it to localize.sh. Just hitting return. Now it's written. Um, so now all of my localizations are in that localize.sh file. So now what I want to do is just run sudo dot slash localize.sh. So sudo means run as a root user. Dot means from this directory. That's what, And the slash means that as well. And then localize.sh. So basically we're running the file that we just edited. Now before below all of that configuration stuff that you just put is a bunch of code that I wrote that's going to sprinkle your information into all of these configuration files you see. <laughs> I don't know if I can point that you see on, on the screen here. Um, so you don't have to do that. So I'm just going to run that. It takes a minute. Not even a minute. It just takes a second. It says, Digipy, localization is made. Please reboot or restart running services. Uh, now this is up to you, really. Um, you might want to just reboot it to be sure, or if you go to the web interface, you can restart the TNC service. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the reboots. It's just it's still just sitting here at the TNC thing. So uh, I'm just going to do the reboot, and I'm going to put you on pause. So I'm going to do sudo um, s. Let's see, how do we normally do this? Shut down minus r zero. So sudo shutdown minus r zero is going to go ahead and reboot this. That means reboot with in zero seconds. And we're kind of watching this guy, yeah, and his screen went blank, so he's rebooting right now, and he'll come up with all of your information as this thing reboots. So it's going to be your call sign, your grid square, your GPS location, your passwords, all of that stuff. It's going to log into APRSIS and start forwarding information. Um, so I'm going to put you on pause again momentarily while this reboots. Uh, so pretend we sat here for about uh, 60 more seconds. All right, so it's been about a minute. This guy is booted up, and how do we know that? Because it says TNC iGate up there. Um, 
It's interesting the green light's flashing. Every now and then Dire Wolf thinks it hears a carrier out of absolutely nothing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that is. Um, so what do we do now? So we know what we, what we can do is basically select a service and plug it into a radio. So I am going to go out to uh, open a new tab and just go out to Digipeter 4. And these are the services that are running there. I'm going to make this a lot bigger so you can read it. And you should see this. And by default, the 1200 baud uh, TNC is active. Um, you can, uh, you'll, you'll see yourself on APRS.fi if you've got all of your information right. In fact, if you go to um, APRS.fi, you will see a station like this little black guy here. Let me see if I can zoom that in. Nah, it's not really going to do it. Anyways, here's KM6LYW-2, and you'll see your call sign, dash 2, and it'll say your call sign, part-time eye gate, and you're on the map. And that's assuming you entered all your information correctly, especially GPS coordinates. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, I can go back to Digipeter 4. You know, I can turn this into an APRS Digipeter. I could turn it into a 300 baud TNC in case you're doing APRS or packet work on HF, which is pretty cool. Turn this into a WinLink gateway, start a PAC client. Um, we're not going to use the rig control daemon because we're not doing any rig control over USB. Or if you want to, you could uh, start up your uh, Linux AX.25 node. Um, in fact, uh, I could just do that right now. I don't know if you can still see it. <laughs> I just clicked on Linux AX.25 node. It should go into node mode. <laughs> it's blinking. Now, this is Raspberry Pi Zero. It's not the fastest. There it is, AX.25 node. And so now you can you know, connect to other nodes, go to bulletin board systems. There's actual bulletin board system running on this right now. In fact, there's Zork is on this. So remember the Infocom game Zork? You could have people log into your radio over AX.25 and actually play Zork or even Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I compiled the, both of those and put them on here. So that's AX.25 node. But that's getting a little advanced. Let me just put it back into 1200 baud VHF TNC mode up at the top there. And again, you're not seeing any call signs because it's not hooked up to a radio yet. So it's restarting into TNC mode. Come on. You can do it. I'm going to make this bigger so you can see it. <laughs> All right, I should say TNC I gate now. I'm going to check. Yeah, it does. So I'm going to walk this over to a radio. Um, Real quick, I'm just going to plug my radio stuff into this. It's a Yaesu 2980. In fact, um, what I might do is just put you on pause for a second. It's right over here, and this I know this phone isn't going to reach over there. So I'm going to put you on pause, and I'll hope you hooked up in just a second. Okay, I hooked it up over there. Oh, boy, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. It is right there. I don't even know if it's lighting up or not. It's it's collecting packets right now. <laughs> I, I, you're going to have to take my word for it, or, or, I'll, or I'll go snag it here in a little bit. So it's hooked up to that Yaesu 2980. Um, I really can't uh, drag a monitor over there. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to let it collect a few packets, then we'll we'll see what came up on the screen. And, and right now, it's on, a, on APRS frequency uh, 144.39. Um, that's how it'll be in the Americas. Of course, if you're in Europe, it's 144.800. And so let me pause it, and I'll bring it back over here, and we'll see if it collected any packets and reported them. All right, I went and got the device off the radio, and uh, of course it's not collecting packets now, but uh, all of these stations were emerging um, while it was sitting there. And lights were flashing, and <laughs> there's, I see some people I recognize on there. So this is in uh, Northern California. So this will fill up a screen usually in about... Uh, you know, five to ten seconds. So I, I just stopped it right here so you can see it collecting some stuff. But uh, yeah, I'd like to get the camera over to that radio so you'd actually see it happening and we could do some transmitting. But uh, see my other videos for that. If you want to see this in action, uh, this is just to demonstrate that we, uh, one, took a completely blank SD card that's in here right now, and uh, we downloaded the software image from Krager.org slash Patreon, right? And I thank you in advance for just chipping in anything as a Patreon. Anything helps. Um, it'll get you the login and password for the SD card image, uh, which we saved. We unzipped. And then we used a SD card image writing software for whatever your 
computer is. Uh, Etcher for Windows. I forget what the Mac one was. I used DD for Linux. And then uh, once we wrote the SD card image to the physical SD card, we put the SD card in the Pi, the DigiPi, and uh, turned it on. And then it became a Wi-Fi hotspot. Remember, I used this little uh, this Wi-Fi device uh, to connect to it. And it, it responded at uh, 10.0.0.5. Um, I went out to that website and entered my Wi-Fi credentials. So then now the DigiPi was on my, my home network. And from there, I was able to SSH in and edit the localize.sh file and then uh, run the file, uh, which uh, sprinkles all of your personal information <laughs> into all of the configuration files on the DigiPi. And it started working. And we saw it pop up on APRS.fi, um, so, so we know it's all good. So anyways, this has been a long-winded example of how to get DigiPi software onto your DigiPi um, to see the hardware um, see the hardware built, see my other videos. This is strictly just an example of how to get the software loaded on this guy. Uh, questions and comments, as always, at the, below this video. Um, I really look forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, and again, I can make a public release of this at some point. Right now, it's just for Patreon users. I really do apologize. A lot of you are really asking for it. Um, but yeah, I really want to make a more polished version uh, for a public release. It'd probably have uh, fewer features, but at least they'll be more, you know, they'll be rock solid, right? And really easy to, to use. So right now, this is really a, a developer image. But you saw it work firsthand, uh, installed. This is KM6LYW, Craig in cool California, where it's actually 91 degrees and cool. <laughs> I'm clear. <laughs>